Well, good morning. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Today is Ministry Fair Day, and so I am so very excited to be here. Guys, it's going to be a very different day. If this is your first day, it's a little different, all right? This is not exactly how we normally do things, but uh, today is going to be a day where we kind of just explore what it means to serve and then give you opportunities to kind of investigate different ministries and small groups in our church so that you can say, okay, I'm in. All right. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians chapter 2. Uh, we're t- taking a break from Luke for just a bit. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, and that's all we're going to be at today. Um, and so uh, before I jump in, we've got, as we think about our uh, ministries, the different ministries that we have and we experience here at the church, I've, I, I just wanted to kind of find a way to kind of creatively express kind of the types of people that fill up our ministries. And so at first I thought about our praise team. They do a great job up here. Amen. Don't, don't they do a good job up back up here? Um, all right. There we go. The first service missed that cue and it was like, eh, you know, so I mean, but um, so when I think about our praise team, you know, I think about, you know, uh, um, they get a Milky Way, you know, um, because they're out of this world. Okay. And quite honestly, musicians, a bit spacey, okay? So, I mean, it's just, uh, that's just kind of who they are. If you, know, uh, if you know one, you know what I mean, all right? So, uh, let's see. Uh, the, the Live Oak Coffee Team, all right? The Live Oak Coffee Team, I mean, amen. All right, when I think about the, the candy bar that represents our Live Oak Coffee Team, it's a Snickers, you know, because when I get that coffee, it satisfies, amen? Uh, amen? So, uh, you know, and we do good coffee here, okay? There ain't no Folgers in this house, all right? I mean... We got uh, uh, local roaster, Camino Coffee Roasters. I don't know if you know this, but it is an actual live oak blend, okay? We got together, and so you can't get our coffee anywhere else. I mean, this is legit, okay? So, but our coffee satisfies. All right. And then I think about our first touch team. I love our first touch team. The people that come in, they hand you the ministry guide, and they, hey, how you doing? Are you a guest? So nice to meet you, that kind of thing. And so when I think about our first touch team, when I think about those people that Kind of also, I would plump into that. It's like, um, you know, uh, Jesse and, and Mary Helen, the people that bring our breakfast every week and, and that kind of thing. By the way, happy birthday, Jesse. So glad. Um, uh, really appreciate him. But when I, think about, when I think about our First Touch team, I think about they bring joy. They're just happy. They're just, just like oozing joy, even early in the morning. And so they're our almond joy, okay? And so they have that. Uh, and and I, I just really appreciate that in them. Then I think about the nursery, the babies, and their adorable little, oh, my little Michael. He's my little preacher. He preaches at me while I'm preaching every Sunday. And so when I think about the babies, obviously it's the baby Ruth, okay? It's a, you know, it's a baby Ruth, babies in the name. And there's just something special and sweet about the little squishies and, you know, and that kind of thing. And so uh, we got to love the babies in the baby Ruth. And then the next age up, you have the, the kids, the kindergartners through fifth grade. And that is the payday. That's a payday. Why? Because quite honestly, you deserve to get paid to work in that group. All right. I mean, quite, I mean, you deserve to get paid. I mean, you're not, but you deserve to get paid uh, in the payday. And and in fact, you you know, you're going to have a little nuts. You got to be a little nuts to work in that, in that group, quite honestly. And then uh, we get to the next age group. That's our teenagers. And our teenagers, um, it's not even a candy bar. It's the Sour Patch Kids. Okay. Now, I have a heart for teenagers. I, I served in youth ministry for 25 years, and so I speak, with, I speak to this with you know, total knowledge and total love and passion. But when you're dealing with teenagers, those are horrible people. I mean, they're, I mean, I mean they, they, are just the, the, they, they can be just the most horrible creation of, you know, of God. How, and just like a Sour Patch Kid, though, if you start working with teenagers... I mean, you begin, and you're like, this is horrible. No, just like a Sour Patch. You, get, you put that in your mouth, and it's like, yeah, that's not good. Stick with it, because in just a minute, in just a little while, that sour turns really sweet. And so when you're dealing with teenagers, and you're like, these little demons are horrible, stick with it, because there's nothing sweeter than seeing a teenager turn on for Jesus and just get excited for Jesus. I mean, it's just amazing. And so that's why there are Sour Patch kids. And then finally, our cleaning team. 
our cleaning team, you know, they're the ones that make sure that our bathrooms are clean and, the, you know, everything's uh, swept and taken care of and the garbage is taken out and that kind of thing. And so those are our peppermint patties, you know, because it's just nice and fresh. And so that's, that's kind of uh, our, our ministry teams there. And so um, we just kind of very excited. They bring sweetness to our church every week. You know, we are very blessed as a relatively new and smaller church to have incredible volunteers, have incredible team leaders, to have these ministries that are just incredibly healthy. And so I'm, I'm so thankful. So today we're going to unpack a little bit about kind of what it means to be part of this thing called Live Oak Church. So let's read in Philippians chapter 2, starting with one verse 1. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Let us pray. Lord, thank you so much for this day, and I thank you for the time we can come together. I pray, Lord, that you would just speak through me, that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so basically what we're here to do is to recognize that we are in community. Uh, the, the idea, the word for church, the word for New Testament church, the Greek word called koinonia, and it really means fellowship. To come together in fellowship. We are in, the, the church is a community. We come together. I mean, the, really, uh, I wanted to kind of name this thing, We Are a Family. And then I was like, I couldn't do that without singing the song all the way through the, uh, the, the, the thing, uh, the sermon. And now that I've even said it, the song stuck in my head. So, but let's examine that passage. Just those short little two verses. There's so much there. It says, so if there is any encouragement in Christ, that, that word if, if there is any, he says, if there's any participation in the Spirit. You know, if, you know, he's, he's saying, listen, there is so much that can be done. There is so much that can be done. This is Paul writing to the, the church of Philippi. And he's saying there's so much that can be done if we can come together, if we can have, you know, the encouragement in Christ and comfort from love and participation in the Spirit. We need to participate. We need to come together. We need to be working in one accord. And, Jesus, and, and Paul is saying... That, that if we have this, amazing things can happen. I mean, the, the church, when the church comes together and when the church has the, the, the same purpose, the same mission, the same mind, amazing things take place. And he goes on in verse 2, he says, Complete my joy by being in full accord. Complete my joy by being together. By being in one mind, one heart, one soul. By being in one mission. And I, I, I love, when we started this church, before the first Bible study, before anything else, it was me in, in a journal just jotting down what would become Live Oak Church. And so I was like, all right, what is the mission going to be of this church? And the Lord just gave me, love God, love people. That came quick. And I said, but you know what? There's got to be more. There's, gotta, there's, there's a missing ingredient there. We, we, have to, we have to be a people group that love God, that live our lives to worship, to love Him, to know who Jesus is, and to be in awe of Him every day. And out of that awe, out of that, uh, that love of God should be a, a, a desire, a passion to be generous and, and to be a people, a people who love people. And the only way to do that in today's time is to be a person of boldness. And so that is our mission and so we're going to be in community to do three things real quick. Number one, to believe. We need to have the same mind. A community helps us strengthen our faith. A community helps us strengthen our faith by coming together and to learn, to come here and to study God's Word, to come together and strengthen our faith, not only through His Word, but to strengthen our faith through through, through uh, shared experiences, to do life together. We call our Bible studies life groups. Not just because, you know, it's just a catchy little phrase. Not just because we're live oak. It's life groups because that's the point of our groups coming together to do life together. It's some, you know, we're studying God's Word, yes, but we're also doing life together. We're sharing our hearts together. We're sharing our burdens together. We're sharing our joys together. We're doing life together. We're encouraging one another. We're strengthening our faith. 
Believe means a community that helps us strengthen our discipline. You see, when, we, when we're able to come together, we're able to believe stronger because we have each other to hold us accountable. I hate the phrase that came out in the church world a couple of decades ago that if I ever came to you and challenged you in your faith, they're just judging me. No, I'm not. I, I, I'm encouraging you. I'm disciplining you. That's what God's called us to do. That, that if you're struggling, if you're falling away, that a Christian brother or sister can come to you and say, hey, you're, you're, you're kind of drifting. When's the last time you prayed? When's the last time you've, you've fellowshiped with, with other believers? When's the last time you opened God's Word? That's not judgment. That's encouragement. That's, that's discipline. To have the same mind is to believe. And that's, that's when the community helps us strengthen our compassion, our discipline, and our faith. We're in community also to, belo- to belong. He says that we must have the same, the same love. The church is more than just a place of worship. This is a mission training field. You see, there's some churches, and, and I'm not going, this isn't a, a, a criticism, it's just a difference. There's some churches a while back, back in the 70s and 80s, several churches got together and they said, you know, we're going to make church seeker-sensitive so that everybody who comes in feels comfortable. And, and the, their heart was in the right place that if more people come in, more people will hear the word and more people will be saved. The problem with that is that in order to stay seeker sensitive where you don't offend people that come in, you have to make the word so, so shallow that it's hard to make any impact at all. It's hard to, to allow people to grow. And in that way, in, in, that, in that model, people invite their friends so that the pastor can lead them to the Lord. And that's not really, as I look at Scripture, it's not really the model. It's not really what the New Testament church is supposed to be. This is a training ground. See, what's supposed to happen is you're here. Now, if you're here and you're like, you know, listen, Pastor, I'm not a Christian, and I'm not really a, much of a churchgoer, but my life is a dumpster fire, and I, wanna, I figure I might as well try, try this Jesus thing out, and that's fine, and we welcome you, and I hope that you're here because I'm, you're, you're absolutely right. And the Holy Spirit did absolutely tell you that this is exactly what you need. Because if your life is a dumpster fire, you need the gospel. You need the fruit of the Spirit to help you in your life. Because that's the only thing that's going to bring you out of that dumpster fire. But when you come to church here, we're supposed to, we're supposed to hear God's Word. We're supposed to be trained in God's Word. We're supposed to be developed in God's Word. And you're supposed to be encouraged, challenged, and, 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 and taught so that you can go out there and to share the gospel with your friends, with your family, and tell them, listen, I, I'm telling you the truth. There's only one way in order for your life to get right, and that is with Jesus Christ. Let me tell you about Him. The church is more than a place of worship. It's a mission training field. We need to share the same love. We belong to a community of believers on mission to love God, love people, and live boldly. So we believe with the same mind. We belong with the same love. And we become through the same purpose. This is having the same love, being in full, full accord and of one mind. We have the same purpose. When we share the mission, we all become who God has created us to be. When we share the mission, when, when we are operating in our, in our passions, when we're operating in our gifts, when you are in this church and, you're de- and you discover what your passion is, what lights you up, what, what just gets you excited, and then you also find out what your spiritual gift is and you're able to work within your passions and your gifts, and when we all do that together, it's amazing what God will do through this church. We believe with the same mind, we belong with the same love, but we become when we're of the same purpose. It's like like imagine a rowboat, and and when everybody is rowing at the same time, in the same direction, that rowboat gets where it's supposed to go. It it, it gets to its destination. But when you're in a rowboat and you're rowing, uh, you know, one direction, and the guy across is rowing another direction, and you're off time and everything. That rowboat is doing nothing but spinning around and around and around. And can you tell I have rowboated? I've been in a rowboat with teenagers before. And that's just what you do. You just spin around and spin around. It's just frustrating. 
But when you're, on, when you're rowing together, when you're rowing on time, you get to your destination. And I'm telling you, when a church comes together and when everybody finds out their passion, when everyone finds out their gift and they row together with, in one accord, we get to our destination. What's happening is too many churches are out there and everyone's doing their own thing, having their own agenda, having their own mission, having their own purpose for being there, and the church does nothing but spin around and around and around and around. We believe by having the same mind, we belong by having the same love, and we become by having the same purpose. You're here for a purpose. We are here for a purpose. You are here at Live Oak Church today, and Live Oak Church is here for a specific reason. Three years ago, we weren't here, and now we're here. Three years ago, there was no Live Oak Church. Three years ago, there was no such thing as Live Oak Church. But God knew here on John's Island that somebody had to step up. There, there needed to be a church that would rise up and say, we're going to do whatever it takes to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to do whatever it takes for those people who are driving by right now, hung over from whatever they did last night, heading to brunch. Those people need Jesus. Those people whose lives are falling apart. Those fe- people whose families are falling apart. Those people all around us need Jesus. And God's like, somebody has to step up. And he called me to say, Sean, plant this church. We need to start this work. Back home in Columbus, Georgia, I served as a youth pastor at a church called Northside Baptist Church. And uh, right behind us, I'm talking about right behind us, the church, big, big, fancy church, Cascade Hills, they uh, built their big new campus. I mean, I'm talking about literally their building shadow cast on our back, on our parking lot. That's how close they were to us. And my pastor was a little frustrated at that. And I remember we had a revival uh, week. And so we went out to eat and um, at Country's Restaurant, which is awesome. And so it was Country's Barbecue. And so we're sitting there at, you know, Country's Barbecue and my pastor was there and he was talking to the revivalist and just revival preacher guy and and he was just sharing about how frustrated he was that this church had the audacity to build in their backyard a fellow Baptist church and the revival preacher said if you were doing your job God would never let them build there in the first place we immediately put our barbecue down you see God had to call them to set up because we weren't doing our job. If Northside Baptist Church hadn't been doing their job, if we had been doing their job, Cascade Hills never would have been able to preach there. We we would have been taken over. We would have needed the space. You see, God has called us here. It's not like John's Island just needed another church. It's not like this this road needed another church. There's another Baptist church 500 yards that way. There's another church across the street. There's about 15 churches on this road. It's not like John's Island was like, you know what? There just seems to be another, there needs to be another church. You know, we're missing another church. No, no, no. It's not we just needed another church. God's like, someone has got to get this done. Now, I'm not saying I'm better. I'm not saying we're better than anyone else. But I'm saying we, God planted us here for a reason. And if we're here, we may as well do the work he's called us to do. And so each one of us, has to discover our passion. Each one of us has to discover our gift and we have to come together in order to get the job done. So what can you do and how can you help? We're here to serve. Now, here's the thing. Our, if, you, if, you don't, if you weren't here when we were, did our sermon series on our core values, go to liveoakji.org, listen online, And there's a series on our core values. And listen to that. Our number one core value is simplicity. Simplicity. Why? Because I have no desire to keep you busy. So don't hear about this ministry fair. He's going to try to get me to sign up for everything. I'm not asking you to sign up for everything. I'm asking you to sign up for something. Because I don't want you signing up for everything. If you're here all the time, I'm going to kick your tail out. Because I don't want you here all the time. If you're here, you're not there. And if you're not there, you're not doing what I'm asking you to do here. 
And so, no, we, we, our, our core value is simplicity. We don't have a ton of stuff to do. Because I don't want you here all the time. I want you out there. And so we don't have a lot to do, but I, we, I want everyone to be involved in some ministry and some Bible study. You need to be learning and you need to be serving. That is the heart of a Christian. Quite simply, you're, you're not here just to sit and observe. This isn't a football game where you get to just come in and watch. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not here to, uh, I, I'm not here to just, you know, tickle your spiritual uh, uh, heart for the day. No. We're all together as a family, as a koinonia, as a community in order to make an impact for this, for this town. And so if you're watching online right now, if you're watching at Facebook or on, on the website, same goes for you. And uh, if you're sick and staying home due to COVID, fine. When you're done coughing, get your tail back. Because, you know, I get it. I had COVID. I, I did, but no, there's nothing wrong with me. Lost my smell and taste for three days for crying out loud. And so I just sat her on board for nothing. But anyway, that's aside. But if you're sick, yes, stay home. I don't want your COVID mess here. But once the COVID is back, get your tail back. You know, if you're not gonna, if you're not going to wear a mask, if you're not going to get vaccinated, go ahead and get your COVID over with and get back. Because we got to get to work. We got things to do. We cannot be held captive by COVID forever. There are people going to hell, and because we can't do our job, we can't do what we're supposed to do because we're scared of COVID. Get a shot, wear a mask, or go ahead and get COVID and get it over with so we can get to work. So what are we here to do? We're here to find our passion, find our gift, and get involved. And so 15 minutes. Boy, it's good, okay? I did a sermon in 15 minutes, all right? Don't get excited. I'm not going to do this ever again. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so we're, we're going to we're gonna pray. And then afterwards... Don't be lying out of here and try to meet the Beth, meet the Methodist to, to, to lunch. Don't do that, okay? I finished early not to give you a, a lunch break. We're, we're ending early because I want you to go to the tables because every ministry is represented. And if you sign up, by the way, you get candy, all right? So, um, and, and maybe, maybe you just want to sign up. Maybe you're not saying, look, they're, they're not going to make you sign in blood. Maybe, maybe you're going to sign up to help with the youth ministry. And maybe you help for a couple of weeks and you tell Marty, it's like, yeah, yeah, the sour never turns sweet. I'm out, you know. Okay. Or maybe you help out with the babies. Maybe you help out with the children. Jordan's doing a great job. We hired Jordan. She needs some help. That poor girl can't do the whole children's ministry by herself. Or, or you know, the cleaning team. And it's funny. I keep telling you we have a cleaning team. I'm the cleaning team. Okay. So, I mean, you know, so we need a cleaning team. You know, I mean, so, so look over and, you know, talk to the people. And, you know, what's required? Is it one meeting? Is it two meetings? What is it that you, that's needed every other week? Once a month? And then the, all, all of the Bible studies are represented back there. And talk about it. Does, does the night, you know, does the night work for you? Does the, the time slot, the, what they're talking about, you know, meet us and talk to us and say, okay, I need to get involved. We want everyone to be in a ministry and in a Bible study. Because the mission is too great. There's too much out there that needs to be done for us to not go all out. Amen? So let me pray. Lord, thank you so much for this day. I thank you for this church. I thank you for everyone who is here. Everyone who is here, you have brought here. They're here for a purpose, to hear this message so that they may engage right now. Lord, I pray that you would open our hearts and our minds. May we be willing to be bold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before, before I let you go to the ministry fair, just really quickly, I want to remind you next Sunday night, 6.30, is our night of prayer and worship. Guys, give me, give me a second. This is really important. Every time we have a night in prayer of worship, I tell you it's important. Every time we have a night of prayer of worship, I tell you it's powerful and it's intimate and it's going to be beautiful, and it is. But this, it, 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 I tell you, God knows what he's doing. Marty and I, we talked about this, the focus on this being the family. We, we decided this four or five months ago, six months ago. Little did, did we know 
how many families that are falling apart in this church. This week I've been in the hospital several times because we've had students who have contemplated suicide and had to be taken to the hospital. We have a student try to commit suicide this week. We have students that are cutting themselves. We have students whose lives, whose families are falling apart. It's plaguing our church and we are just part of what's going on out there. And so the first thing we do, not the last thing, the first thing we do is we pray. And so next Sunday night, I'm asking all of Live Oak Church to come and we're just going to cry out to God for our families. We're going to cry out to God for those people who are broken. And so I just ask and invite all of you to bring you, bring your friends, bring your family, and to come. And let's come together and we'll pray and worship for our families. All right? Um, all right. You're dismissed. Go to the ministry fair.